I'm going to focus on one kind of stress today. I'm a big believer in youth being very resilient. I think our Muslim youth um, are very powerful and they're very strong and all youth in general are very strong and even though they're facing lots of factors today, they still have lots of resilience in them. But there is one stress that they face that we really need to become much more aware of as parents. The, the goal of my talk is aimed at parents, um, but inshallah, try to give examples that kind of apply to everybody. So that one stress I'm going to focus on today is the stress from social media, okay? And the stress from digital, what it takes to be a digital parent. We have a toolkit called the Digital Parenting Toolkit, so I'll give you guys the link to that at the end, inshallah, but you can check that out for more information. And I'm just going to present a, a small piece of information from that, because I think that we are so inundated with social media, it's so a part of who we are. And let me give you a quick example. So I have three young children. We rarely go out to eat because, again, I have three young children, and they drive me nuts at a restaurant. So one day, I decided to go out to eat, and we were eating breakfast, um, you know, at a at a diner. And I looked up, and I saw um, another family with three young three children. They were much older than mine. Mine are under seven, but they were probably a couple, you know, middle school, high school kids. And and then their two parents, and all of them were sitting on their phones. I'm I'm not exaggerating. Everybody was on their phone. The waiter came by. They didn't look up. Waiter walked away. My son, who's two and a half years old, said hi to them just because he likes to say hi to everybody. They didn't, nobody looked up, right? So I thought to myself, what kind of family outing are they having, right? They're out to eat, but they're sitting on their phone. So what impact is this having on how they learn to interact with each other? What quality family time means, right? That's a, that's a very you know, classic, basic example, not very dangerous. I'm gonna give you another example that it's, it's a lot more extreme. And I, and I pray that all of our communities are protected from it. And I'll speak a little bit in code because I know that we have younger um, kids in the audience. How many of you have heard of Megan Meyer? Megan Mayer, if I said the name wrong. From 2006, no one? So Megan Meyer was a 14 year old girl who was, you know, she was dealing with some mental health issues. She was, um, had ADD. She was a little bit depressed. And you have heard of her. Okay. One person. I'm doing special Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll give you a special cup just because you heard of her. So I, I, I'm glad that you haven't heard of her because it is a sad story. But inshallah, I want to extrapolate the lessons from it. Um, so she was, you know, was struggling with some issues. She had made a friend online. And this is some years ago. So this is MySpace. How many remember MySpace? Yeah, heard of it, I know, it's before your time. So she had made a friend on MySpace, his name was Josh. And, you know, they were talking just the way normal, it was going positive. And then one day she gets this message from him and the message says, I don't know if I wanna be friends with you anymore because I've heard that you are not very nice to your friends. And again, she's struggling with depression, so she takes this more seriously than other people would. And she gets really impacted. And she doesn't know what's going on, she ignores it for a couple of days, she's a little sad. A few days passed, and then she gets bombarded. She sees bulletins and pages being created about her, about people calling her fat, about bullying her. And you know she's really upset. She comes home one day, and her parents don't understand. They're about to go somewhere, so the mom's kind of rushing her. And you know she gets a, a final message that says, everybody in O'Fallon knows how you are. You're a bad person, and everybody hates you. Have a crappy rest of your life. The world would be a better place without you. Before, her parents don't know this is the last message she receives. That night, parents rushing out, they don't hear from her. They go up to her room and she had ended her life. Later on, after an investigation, they realized that was the last message that she received. And after, you know, cops got involved and they investigated, the account of the person she was talking to, Josh, was not an actual person. It was another mother in the neighborhood of a friend who this girl, who Megan used to be friends with and was no longer friends with. So they did all of that and set that all up just to get back at her. And her life was ended for that reason, right? This is the impact that digital media can have. I pray none of that happens to anybody. And I know that's a really extreme example, but I wanted to give that example just to show you that even though social media can be very empowering 
and it can be helpful. It can be dangerous as well. And it really is taking a hold of the lives of our youth and causing some stress that we need to deal with as parents. So I wanna go over, just to give you guys you know, some of the stats of what's going on, but also to kind of help you, I want you to walk away with practical tips about what you can do as well, inshallah. So if I had to ask you how much time do teens spend on social media, Someone give me a number, in hours per day. 17 hours, 24 hours, <laughs> nine hours, 12. Okay, so someone up here was very accurate and they said nine hours. And a, research, a lot of research that's been conducted is exactly right. Nine hours. Social media, teens spend nine hours. That's compared to just two and a half hours about 10 years ago, right? So nine hours, that's more than you sleep. That's how much time we spend on social media. More than you sleep. I mean, sleep is a physical need that your body has. And yet we're so attached to our phones, right? Just to break that down a little bit further, the, in that research study, the, when they broke it down to see like what does social media mean and how, what does it look like, so about 68% of that time is spent on email, 36% is spent just web surfing. What do you think is the most? Texting, yep. 86% was spent texting, 66% um, just social networking, and then 70% just checking the time. <laughs> like, just checking, why do I have to open my phone to check the time? And then what does that do? You see notifications, and now then you have to open your notifications, right? So it's, it's pretty invasive, right? Why is this a problem, right? Why is, it a, why is it an issue that this is so invasive in our kids' lives? Let me give you a couple more stats real quick. I really wish that you guys would be able to see it on the screen, but that's okay. 69% um, of teens regularly receive personal messages online from someone they don't know, right? That's more than a majority receive messages. So what they do with those messages, who that person is on the other end, that's another story. 64% of teens post photos or videos of themselves, while more than half of them post information about where they live. Okay. Nearly one in 10 teens, about 8%, post his or her cell phone number online. 19% of teens have been bullied or harassed online, and that number varies depending on um, research study and also who you're, like, who you're talking about and who you're assessing. The incidence of online harassment is higher than 23% amongst 16 and seven year olds specifically. Girls are more likely to be harassed or bullied than boys online, so it's 21% versus 17%. Girls are also more likely than, and than boys to post personal photos or videos of themselves. So that's 70% more likely than 58% of boys. Okay. Why do these things matter? One of the other reasons all of this matters is 74% of parents say that they trust their children with their online activity, right? Raise your hand if you trust your child with their online activity. Okay, clearly this room is not 74%, right? <laughs> Much less, so we could talk about that, right? Even though in a lot of the research it says 74%, what, it, what the reality is is there's a lot that, are, that is going on that it's not trustworthy, right? That youth are exposed to. So in some research, there is youth are exposed to inappropriate material, right? 43% access simulated violence, 36% access sexual topics, 32% access actual material. Right, I won't detail that. There's also research showing that about 40% actually get assistance for homework, and I'm saying assistance in the nice way, online. So when we say parents are trusting your children, maybe think about that a little bit. 15% of teens have hacked into another person's social network account. 35% of teens argue with their friends online. 41% children are victims of online threats, and even though about 10% of teens actually worry for their safety, none of them tell their parents a thing about it. One last stat about the danger, and then we'll talk about what all this means. Technology users nowadays are becoming much more aware of 
negative or stressful events that happen, right? Because we're so connected. So a lot of research by the American Psychological Association as well as the Pew Research Center looked at you know, what's, what are the rates and based on the different kinds of social media? So what they found is across the board, anyone that uses social media is twice as more likely to be aware of negative events that happen, even if it's not near them at all, right? Somewhere else something is happening, you're aware of it. And of those different kinds of social media, they, they mentioned that Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram were the highest rates compared to anybody that doesn't use that. Why does that matter, right? It matters because 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if something was negative was happening, you know, some kind of attack somewhere, or someone getting hurt, or someone hanging out without you, you were not able to find out about it. It didn't get to your self-esteem right away, immediately, right? It got to you later, it impacted you later. It wasn't so heavily saturated in your mind. And what's happening is with youth, and even with adults who use social media, it is so heavily into your mind all the time, right? Youth go to school, Whatever happens in school, right? We all know social media doesn't turn off in school, right? Stuff happens in school. You come home. You know, back in the day, in my day, there was a separation. You came home, school finished, and you were home. Is there that separation now? Absolutely not. Whatever happens in school continues home, on your phones, on the different apps, right? It continues into bedtime. What do you think that does for sleep quality? What does it do for self-esteem? What does it do for your social skills and how you interact with other people? What does it do for increasing bullying that happens because it continues throughout the day? The reason I gave that example of Megan is to show you how, how little it takes for it to happen, right? Even though as, as in, an insignificant as it can be. So keep in mind self-esteem, social skills, right? The other thing that's happening is that, uh, how many of you have heard of FOMO? I know the youngsters have heard of FOMO. No? F-O-M-O. -O. So fear of missing out? Yeah, right. So fear of missing out is this idea that, exactly what it sounds like, that you're gonna miss out on something that's going on, that you're being left out, right? So what happens with youth now is when they see their friends posting online that they're hanging out, right? Because don't we post everything? Every meal we're about to have, we post it. Every place we're going, we post it. So when you see that, now feeling excluded and feeling left out is so much quicker. And it impacts us right away compared to before when you would have heard about it maybe a couple of days later or maybe not even heard about it, right? So our youth are dealing with this like, oh, they hung out. Maybe they didn't like me. Why didn't they like my post? Let me go back. And, and that thought that they have impacts their emotions. It makes them feel sad and depressed. That then impacts their behavior. They want to go back online and do more to kind of you know, negate that feeling that they're having. So it's kind of like a cycle between their thoughts and their emotions and then their behaviors. The other thing that it's doing is <clears throat> it's making <clears throat> a rise in Narcissism. I'm not saying this that everybody is nar narcissistic, right? For sure. How many of you heard of the selfie syndrome? Yes. How many take selfies? We all take selfies. Everybody should be raising their hand. I know we all take selfies, right? So everyone taking a selfie doesn't make you a narcissistic, right? That's not the point. The point is that the more, when you're in the process of taking a selfie, right? When you do that again and again, which is what our youth are doing again and again, right? That pattern you're constantly thinking in your head, I wonder what they're gonna think about this picture. Do I look nice in this picture? Do I need to adjust this picture? Does this look like what I want people to think it looks like instead of what your reality is, right? And so how you want other people to evaluate it, you totally changes. So imagine what impact that has on how our youth are thinking about the value of others instead of being confident in themselves and being appreciative of what their reality is, right? So that's what the selfie syndrome does. It doesn't mean we're all walking around as you know, narcissistic. It's just increasing that tendency in, a, in, you know, in the current generation. One last example I wanted to give of the impact it's having before, inshallah, going into some practical solutions that you can um, enact as parents. If I gave you a piece of chocolate, those of you that don't like chocolate, ignore this question. If I gave you chocolate, how good do you feel? And you eat that chocolate. Satisfied. Satisfied. Feel good, right? You feel happy. Chocolate is awesome. Well, researchers ha did a study. This is a groundbreaking study out of California. Um, but they did a research study looking to see what happens to youth's brains when they are on social media. 
And what they found is when they're, they, and they scanned, um, there was about 13 to 18 year olds. They scanned their brains as they're looking at photos of themselves and they're, as they're looking at likes of what the photo gets, right? What they found is the same area of your brain that gets activated when you eat chocolate is the same area that gets activated when you see the number of likes on your photos or the number of likes of your friends on their photos, right? Think about that for a second. Like the fact that you eat something as delicious as chocolate is what you feel. <laughs> that same area of your brain, that excitement area, that, that, that part gets lit up when you see photos of yourself and they have likes, right? What was more interesting is then they took it to the next level and they showed them pictures, they showed them neutral pictures of like food, of people hanging out, things like that. And then they showed them pictures um, that were considered risky, so of like people drinking and smoking, things like that. And then they compared their brain activity as well. And they found that people were more likely so they, they, had to, they asked the youth, like, if you were likely to click like, right? So those of you that don't have social media, that means you like the picture or not on Facebook, other social media that I can't give you an example of because I'm not a social media person. Um, but they found that people were more likely to click like if more people liked that picture, period, right? Regardless of what picture they were looking at. So it didn't matter if they were looking at a risky picture or a picture uh, that was just very neutral. No matter what, they were more likely to click like that they liked that picture if they saw the number of likes being high, right? So what, think about what that tells you in your mind. What was also interesting is during that time, they looked at their brain activity, right? Those same areas that were activated when eating chocolate. When looking at the risky versus neutral pictures, they found that the part of your brain that works on control and decision making was less activated when they click the risky pictures. What that basically means is that part of our brain that says be careful, there's danger ahead, went down just because of people's likes online. So imagine what that means for what our youth are seeing online when, these, when they see people they know liking things that are risky or posting things that are risky. Just because it's got high likes or high, it's you know, popular or, or fa you know, favored amongst people, it means that they're more likely to not think that it's dangerous, even if it is, right? The, the very typical classical exposure to peer pressure, but in a much more dangerous way. So what we, can we do? I got my uh, three minute warning, so I'll try to get through these inshallah as quick as possible. Um, what I, I do wanna say, all of what I've talked about, as well as these tips that I'm gonna give you are on our Digital Parenting Toolkit website. So if you just go to the fyi.org, Digital Parenting Toolkit, all of this is there in much more detail inshallah. So what can you do? As parents, what can we do? I know there's lots of tips around digital parenting itself, uh, di social media itself, but the most important thing that I think the other speakers have already talked about is having an open line of communication, right? It's not all about checking their phone all the time. That's not the point. If you build an open communication with them, they will feel like they can trust you and they'll come to you when something scares them, right? It also means just talk to them, right? Have conversations with them on a daily basis about what they're on. What are they doing? If they tell you a story about something that happened online, talk to them about it. Get more information. Don't just shut that part out because you're just so scared of digital media, right? We need to embrace it. It's a part of our lives and it's not going anywhere, right? But you can teach them to think about different things when they're about to post, right? That's a conversation to have. Have a family plan, right? Set some rules about what's okay in your house and what's not okay. Be a digital mentor, right? Show them through your own way and the rules that you set how to, how to have a healthy online activity, right? An online life. So some, some examples that people do is not allowing cell phones at the dinner table, right? Turning off notifications when you get home. Not allowing devices when you're with your friends in the home, right? Different, and then obviously li setting limits. Not allowing laptops in the bedroom after a certain time. Having an open area where the computer is accessed. All those things are rules that you can put into place that will protect kind of the outside world that you can't control, right? So be a digital mentor, come up with an agreement, have a digital footprints discussion, right? Digital footprints is just everything that you post, it doesn't go anywhere. It creates a digital footprint of your profile over time. There are stories of employers who don't hire people because of what they see from their 
Facebook when they were in college. There, uh, a study showed that about 40% of employers didn't hi hire people because of what they saw on social media five years ago, right? So talk to your kids about how just the way that we're accountable for every single thing we do on the Day of Judgment and Allah will ask us questions, we're also accountable for our online world. Every statement you make, you hurt someone in real life versus hurting someone in the online world, it's the same thing. So have that conversation with your kids. Talk to them about what it means to represent yourself in the online world. Number five, you can search online for anything you're not familiar with, right? I'm not saying everybody should go out there and have a Twitter app if that's not what you're interested in, but you should know what it does. You should know the dangers it poses as well as the benefits. You should also just know the lingo. So if your kids talk about it, you can have a conversation with them and not sound like you're you know, from the Stone Age and, and can't connect with them. You can also, there's lots of security tools, which are all, lots of examples of those are given in the toolkit, inshallah. And the last thing that I just wanted to say is, social media can be a really powerful tool. You have to embrace it, right? At, we're at a point where the question is not, you know, do you have a choice on using social media? No, the question now is, how do you use it in a way that's balanced? Our youth have lots of energy, and they have lots of positive energy, so you can use social media to channel their energy. All of the, how many of you are aware of March of Our Lives? March on, for our lives, sorry. March for our lives? No, right, right? The rally for gun control in schools. One of the reasons it got so big is why? Social media, you know about what's happening everywhere else. It's a connected community, right? You can teach your kids, give them avenues, connect them with people that help them use that in a positive way. So social media doesn't have to be something negative. Again, use it to channel their energies in a positive way. The last thing I just wanted to say, and I apologize that you weren't able to see the slides, is if you're interested in what I talked about, again, check out the toolkit. It's the Family and Youth Institute Digital Parenting Toolkit. The Family Youth Institute has lots of different toolkits where it takes all the information you need to know and put it in one spot. It's research-based. We do parenting, mental health, um, marriage, and then I, youth and, men, and youth development. So if you're interested in any of that, please check out the workshops that we offer. Feel free to talk to me. Check out our website, and you can go to, we have a Facebook page, right? Use social media to like us, inshallah, and get more information. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for your patience.